So I wanted to do a quick video on something that I got that's definitely worth speculating on a bit. And we all love a bit of speculation. As you might recall, I've been saying for quite some time that Big Navi's performance should land at around 2080 Ti levels plus 15% give or take. And that there's a cut down version of that also coming out at around the same time. So looking back at Rogue Games article a few months ago on the GPU IDs, this would be the XT and the XL variant. There's still the XTX variant of course, which I always presumed was just an equivalent to the Lisa Su edition of the 5700 XT from last year. So it would be similar to the XT but about 3 or 4% faster. A recent video from Paul Kelly from the YouTube channel Not an Apple Fan throws a spanner in the works so to speak, as he has information that this XTX variant is indeed a 6900 XT. XT with an impressive 80 compute units and a boost clock of 2.2 gigahertz. Well, that along with the information I have today might give us all some hope of seeing AMD back at the top of the performance charts. So this is Big Navi, or rather the Big Navi die. Now for obvious reasons I have masked this heavily as several heads would roll if AMD found out who gave this to me. So even though I have an image of the actual die, what I'm showing you here is sort of an artist's rendition if you will. Well, a rendition that matches the die very closely. But for instance, I removed every product reference and even changed the caps around the die. These are the 5700 XT caps. The big Navi ones look different. The reason I think it's still worth showing you this, even heavily edited, is of course, as you might have noticed, that big Navi is indeed big. In fact, it's massive. This is how how large the die is, I've kept the dimensions the same, although I've erased any markings off of it. So I used a few elements on the rest of the board to get an accurate measurement of the die. So for instance, I took measurements based on the die's relative size to the PCIe connector on the board. Putting them side by side, the die is roughly 29.5 PCIe lanes tall by 18.5 PCIe lanes wide. I did use other elements as well, such as the GDDR6 modules on the PCB to get a similar approximation of the scale. So anyway, after much measuring, the die comes at 29mm tall and 18.5mm wide, or 536mm squared roughly. Even though I measured this several times using different elements for reference, it's still possible that I made a mistake, so if the final dimensions end up being different, then I apologize in advance, I tried my best. The physical to Topology is exactly as you see here. It looks pretty tall and about as wide when compared to the 5700 XT die. Again, I should note that this is XL and XT. This is not the XTX variant. Very few people have access to that, even inside AMD. So for those who are hoping to see HBM chips somewhere, they are not there, at least on the XT and XL. But don't lose hope regarding the XTX. <laughs> I'm not here to crush anyone's dreams. I would be very surprised if AMD had another chip for the XTX or the 6900 XT that featured HBM considering the XT looks like this, especially if the chips are indeed being made on 7 and plus. Making two different chips on such an expensive node would be a huge investment from AMD unless they plan to reuse the XTX variant for the professional GPUs or for Apple or something like that. But anyway, what does this gigantic gigantic die tell us about Big Navi. Not counting the Fury X, which had a large portion of the die dedicated to HBM, this seems to be the largest consumer graphics chip AMD has ever made. In the case of Navi 10, so the 5700 XT for instance, it seems clear now that it was really just a stepping stone to a proper new RDNA microarchitecture. While Navi 10 featured several elements of GCN, RDNA 2 is supposed to be a completely new microarchitecture, so I guess it made sense for AMD to make it very small in comparison to this. A smaller RDNA 1 chip meant that not a lot of wafer space was required, wafers that would be better used for Xan CPUs. 
Now, however, with RDNA 2, as we can see here, it seems AMD is going all out. I'm going to assume that RDNA 2 is on N7+, Plus, like the consoles, so that's TSMC's 7 nanometer EUV. Looking at TSMC's data, we know that that represents about 20% more transistors in the same area compared to regular 7 nanometer. So let's do some back of the envelope quick maths. We know that the 5700 XT is a 225 watt GPU on regular TSMC 7 nanometer, clocked at 1887 megahertz on average. The memory controller is 256 bit, running at the old 14 gigabit per second, which we presume will be bumped to 16 gigabit per second this generation. And it had a 251 millimeter squared die for a total of 10.3 billion transistors. For the die I have here, Navi 21, we know there's going to be 1.2x more transistors, as I mentioned, because of the 7N plus node, and a reduction in power consumption at ISO speed of 15%, which basically means that you'll get a 15% reduction in power consumption just from the node alone. So on this big boy 536 millimeter squared die, 20% more transistors per millimeter to square means that if we divide 536 by 251, we get 2.135, and 20% of 2.135 is 0.27. So what we have to do now is add that up for a total of 2.562. That is our multiplier here from one chip to the other. If we multiply 10.3 billion transistors by 2.562, we get 26 billion 378 million and 300,000 transistors. So let's just round that to 26.3 billion transistors. These 26.3 billion transistors include things like memory controllers, just like the 10.3 billion on the N10 do. But this time around, we might have fixed function for ray tracing. How many of the 26.3 billion transistors are used for real-time ray tracing? I have no idea. How much of this is cash? I presume a lot, but there's no way of knowing at this point. So while NVIDIA's RTX 3080, for instance, has 28.3 billion transistors, and Navi 21 will have 26.3 billion transistors, it's hard to say exactly what that means for performance, because we don't know what those transistors are being used for. However, the 3080 is boosting to 1710 megahertz, while the XTX variant of Navi 21, so that would be your 6900 XT, will be running at 2.2 gigahertz if the information we got from the YouTube channel Not an Apple Fan is correct. And Paul has great sources. In fact, I know he had the pictures of the 6000 series GPU well before anyone else. Go subscribe to Paul's channel, by the way, if you haven't already. I'll put a link in the description. Now, we could go on and try and extrapolate the performance of Navi 21 based on die size, but I think that's a fool's errand without knowing what exactly the transistors are being used for. But this gigantic die does seem to give credence to the rumors that have been saying that RDNA 2 would be twice as fast as RDNA 1, something I've been skeptical of, admittedly. The information I've been getting and sharing with you guys is that the N21 XT variant is only 15% faster than a 2080 Ti, but with a die this large, I think that's a conservative estimation, unless AMD has done a terrible job of scaling RDNA 1. I will be more than happy to admit that 2080 Ti plus 15% was wrong, because obviously I want nothing more than a healthy GPU market. I feel like I have to repeat this on every video, but I don't care who is the dominant GPU force, Nvidia or AMD. All I want is faster GPUs at more affordable prices. Now if RDNA 2 is indeed twice as fast, then we are looking at 3090 levels of performance. According to tech power ups, charts that 3090 is 195% faster than the 5700 XT. There is of course the small issue of the 256 bit bus. Even if RDNA 2's core is twice as fast, if its memory starved, then it's not going to perform two times as fast overall. Probably more like 70 to 80% as fast on a 256 bit bus, or even less, which would put it behind the 3080, or at least about on par with it. So either AMD somehow managed to mitigate the memory limitations of a 
56-bit bus and the GPU is indeed beating a 3080 and performing on par with the 3090, or the information I've been getting for a while now is indeed correct. And we can only expect around 15% over the 2080 Ti for the XT variant, which would be pretty underwhelming for a die this big on 7N+. With a die this large, I'm starting to think AMD is going all in this time, and we might have another R9-290X situation on our hands with AMD taking the performance crown. In fact, the dies even look sort of similar. We will know for sure in a few weeks. This shorter than usual video was made possible by my awesome patrons. Not only has YouTube revenue been consistently going down, but the patronage support is also declining, as we're all living through difficult times. If you can afford just $1 per month, consider supporting my channel on Patreon today and get exclusive access to the Cortex Discord server. Thanks for watching and until the next one.